And today we're going to talk about something that has been on a lot of people's minds, and that is investing in the proper free to play players uh, and heroes, especially for those who are in that early to mid game stages. I think that when you're end game, there's a lot more you can invest into, a lot more variety, a lot more paths you can take. But that being said, I I, I don't want to I I want to stress that this guide is not about chasing the meta. It's simply about understanding the game, making the most out of the resources you have, and really, I mean, th this, a lot of a lot of this guide could be useless for you if your RNG got you lucky. You could skip a lot of these steps, but the good part about this guide is that these characters are going to be worth investing into from the beginning because they are useful to you from the beginning to my personal barrier is that they will make a significant impact before needing to reach legendary plus legendary plus is sort of that first true barrier into getting those extra abilities that are locked behind um ascending your character granny and lucius are on this list and let me show you why mm. granny with her abilities here day. can taunt enemies for three seconds and recovers 140% HP and also can turn uh turn basically life gain into enemies reduction in haste and on top of that her ultimate has a healing aspect to it. So great survivability. But my favorite part about her is her taunt. She's a great single tank and I think worth investing into. If you don't get her first. I think a great option to pick Shield is someone brothers, like Lucius. For myself. Let's I didn't started. give Lucius the credit first at first because I got on Tondra so early, but he honestly has so much tankiness to him. I mean, it makes sense, right? With his shield that he blocks blocks 470% for 10 seconds, deals 70% damage to an enemy, knock him back, knocks, has a knockback and gains a shield as well. So like almost every aspect of him has shields and he can also heal the weakest ally. That to me is insane. So I think Lucius, Granny, a great main tank. Their features are main tanks and that's what they do best. I would say the one downside to these characters is that there's not much to them other than their survivability. Um, of course, Granny, Granny does have the taunt, but they're great survivable tanks but they're not doing much beyond that. I think your best heroes are, are heroes who can do a lot more than just one thing, but these guys really just do their one thing very well. So two tanks I think you should invest into as a free to play player are Granny and Lucius. Next, I wanna talk about why I'm not picking Thorin. A lot of people might ask why I'm not picking Thorin. You're the only I honestly, one who's never betrayed I focused you. Thorin when I first started playing. We will make them pay. And I do think at some point you do need to pick him up, especially if you're doing Dream Realm, because you will need somebody who's not gonna get insta-killed and get in, like insta-destroyed in Dream Realm. So he is going to be important to pick up once you start getting those team comps built up. But he's not the tank I'm picking in any situation. Uh, otherwise, I think especially mid game, I'm more and more recognizing that in fights with Thorin, where he main tanks, when he is going through his resurrection ability, he drops all aggro. And the entirety of your back team gets put through the fodder until he comes back up. And then by the time he comes back up, he doesn't really have a taunt ability like Granny does to be able to recover what has been lost. So 
if you can keep him alive, it's great. But the moment he goes through resurrection, especially in those mid level fights, it, he's not that great. And he's not somebody I would invest into beyond just getting his initial. So that's my honest thought with with Thorin. Um, I think he's essential, but worth not worth it initially on Tondra, for example. Uh, she's a great hero, but unless she has someone like Rowan backing her to make sure her ult is happening or you have a good comp to keep her alive and make sure she's getting all the uses of her abilities. She's not as she's not going to be as useful as a main tank. All right, moving along. I need to move this faster. Actually, I have off tanks. Off tanks are your people who can take damage but aren't main tanking. They're simply the people who, whenever you do your three, two split or however you do it, they're the ones taking some of the hits when your tank is not. So I have Coco, Shakir, uh, and Brutus. Oh, and Kruger and Cecia. There's five of them of, of these ones because I honestly think an off tank, especially mid-level games become absolutely essential. Simply put, wow. Coco has oh. physical damage reduction. Her greatest feature is her physical damage reduction and uh, healing allies on top of that. Is her DPS the greatest? No. Does she do a decent amount? Sure. But she's got a lot of physical damage reduction and off healing. So I think that's that makes her a great character. Um, next one we have is Brutus. Brutus, simply put, has a cheap death mechanic. Uh, if you've never seen All it before, right. Indomitable um, makes, makes him immune to his first fatal blow. Feature I absolutely love. Next one is, uh, is Kruger. Kruger, I initially wasn't going to include uh, on this list. You want a tango? Gotta but sharpen my axe. I think his self-healing... <laughs> His utility in Dream Realm, and on top of that, my favorite uh, aspect is Shattering Armor, which basically tears through the enemy's armor, makes him a really good off tank. So he has a little bit of tankiness, a little bit of survivability, and also makes fighting for your other characters e easier, which is, I think, a great utility for him. And then lastly, we have Cecia. Cecia. Great hero all around. Audience. Honestly, her DPS is want? great, but honestly, if she didn't have her ult, which also entangles enemies, I wouldn't include her in this list. And the reason why is simply because he, she's a great DPS, but doesn't really have anything else special that makes the team work out. But the fact that she can drop a tank makes her a DPS and a tank. So it's literally filling two roles and that's insanity. So Cecia, one of my favorite characters, absolutely strong out the get because he can drop an additional character on the field, um, which is different from every other hero is insane. So amazing character, great as an off tank DPS. Um, Oh, and the last part about Cecia is that her ability, her ultimate, if you're controlling it, you can nuke the back row of any fight. So you can basically put the 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 minion all the way in the back and then just kill their back row. Absolutely amazing ability. Using that ability helps you learn a lot and is 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 great for her. So, so I almost forgot to include one of my favorites here, which is Shakir. I actually haven't been able to use this character a lot but has a great feature that makes him a great off tank DPS, uh, such as Lupine Aura, which gives a two tile radius, reducing allies damage taken. And also he benefits from that, getting attack increase from that and uh, increases haste. So there's a lot of benefits he gives to the team as well as also contributing to the overall, mostly melee DPS uh, damage reduction. So great. Uh, member to add to the team as well as uh, a, a great off tank uh, in general so sorry I didn't include it in the initial one I just I, I thought I was going through the recording and I was like I missed this one and I felt so bad so with that we have off tank DPS Coco 
Brutus, Cecia, Shakir, and don't forget Kruger. So the, those are the five off tank DPS that you can utilize. All right, back to the original video. Um, next, we're going to move on to um, I, I'll call this supports and then uh, versus main healer, a double support or main healer. So the first combination I learned uh, like my first week of playing uh, by someone in chat and it was super helpful. And that was using uh, Odie and uh, I'm sorry, not Odie, Smokey and uh, Rowan together because these two um because these two have hey, you all right i'll say Be more careful synergistic effects meaning that rowan benefits people who struggle to get to their ultimates um people like entendre um and people like coco and then mixing that with smoky and mirky's constant healing effects um, but also, um, the ability of Rowan to restore energy and then the ultimate, which also restores energy, um, and HP, it just works together so beautifully. They're an amazing combination. Can Smokey work on his own? Uh, Smokey and Mirky work on their own? Sure. But with Rowan, I think that combination is Probably one of the best like synergy combo uh, combos I've seen in the game so far. Um, and of course, this is early mid game. Alternatively, you have someone like Hewen. I don't really have to explain what she has. She has full, full it, map, it was full battle area healing uh, with her ultimates. Now, if you're doing Hewen, I do have some recommendations. Um, I think that even though she's a solo healer it is always good to have a support mixed into there so supports um such as cassidy and parissa to me are solid dps's who also have a uh, a support feature have cassidy you ever wondered why some things can fly has the, the ability air? to select an ally granting them title strength the and dealing extra magic damage will tell you everything. and then alternatively parissa while also being a dps he has the ability to grant one ally haste oh i'm sorry attacks yeah haste haste and attack damage so two great heroes honestly picking one of the over the other if you're trying to pick supports um i would pick whichever one is one say if you're doing light bearer heroes or wilder heroes whichever one gives you that benefit or buff maybe uh but if not say you only have two anyways um pick the one based off of whatever you need more uh whichever benefit you need more um I, I kind of pick based off of the buff personally. Like if I'm doing Hewen, Parissa, uh, like maybe like maybe I'm throwing in Floorbell, then I'll then I'll do those three. Um, so that's the alternative. So you can either have the double support of having uh Smokey and Mirky and Rowan, or have Hewen and maybe an alternative DPS support. I like that these two characters kind of multi-class in that the, they have supports that help out your team but also they're decent dps as well so they're great they're great characters lastly i have the range dps hybrid utility this includes um this would include things like your your back row damage dealers and things like that these are the ones i like to fill any team with for the sake of what they what they what they provide is that essential utility that changes the tide of the fight depending on the fight that you're facing so i have odie actually odie this time odie is going to be your best single target dps in any situation simply because he has a uh, corrosive dart and poison um these deal uh these deal a great amount of damage and my favorite part about him is that his damage just constantly goes up and increases um and even still 
look at the base damage 25%, 27%, 29%. You don't need 62%, 65%, 70%. It's not increasing a whole bunch. So it's even at its base level, it's doing a great amount. So great single target, best single target DPS, especially for Dream Realm. I love using him. But once again, he is single target. Next, we have Aaron. Aaron, I haven't gotten to use to his full potential yet, I will admit. But the more and more I play, uh, I do PvP, the razor points I realize he I has so much abilities that make him like, he fits so many roles that are amazing. So, first off, he's got an amazing uh, debuff that he applies to enemies. And he can also create a shield for himself. So unlike Alsa, he can uh, create a shield and increase his own dodge rate. And then lastly, and this is my favorite part, is his ult. His ult allows him to cast a tornado, which is essentially like a like an AoE taunt or an AoE uh, displacement. You can place targets basically wherever you want them into that circle which is huge, especially in PvP. So he has so much utility. His damage isn't bad either. 100% one of my favorite, I would call him like a hybrid character uh, worth investing into. The last one I have, um, and this is one of my favorites and one of the newest <laughs> is Floribelle. Miss Floribelle, Miss hey, be good. I don't have to hey. say much about her. <laughs> Pretty lively, aren't but they? She has she's amazing range DPS. She's a warrior class, so she has a little bit more tankiness, has life drain. On top of that, she can also uh drop other minions like uh Cecia does, uh, which cast big AoE DPS, a big ring of AoE DPS. So to me, if you're looking to fill a single target DPS, you know who to fill, you fill Odie. Uh, Floribel is the is the AOE DPS, the AOE range DPS. Does a, a great amount of damage. Is great utility. Has plenty of of uses, not only for herself but for the team. She plays so many roles. I can't see. I can't see skipping her in any sort of like tier list. No matter what, AFK Journey is a game, and games are meant to be fun. So please don't stress too much about following the meta. There are plenty of heroes who can get the job done. Find the heroes you enjoy playing with, whatever suits your play style, and enjoy your journey, okay? Thank you so much for watching, everybody, YouTube. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe. And for more AFK journey guides and tips, Check out this page, Sean said go, and may fortune favor your journey. Peace.